Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be taking a look at fitting LED bulbs to a classic car such as an MGB. So first of all, why should you consider fitting LEDs to your classic car? Probably the most important thing is the light output they give and a secondary benefit is the lower current that they, that they need in order to run. I'm just going to show you on my car here. If I, um, I'm going to power it up now. I do have a little voltmeter in the car here built into the uh, built into the dash I'll just try and get the glare off the screen so there we go so at the moment that's reading 12 12.4 volts that's with the ignition on so let's just see the difference when we put the lights on so headlights has dropped us down to 11 11.2 volts and the rain light drops us down to 11 oh just 10.9 now and oh, sorry let's put the indicator on and then the brakes drops us down, so 10.7, let me just switch those off again. So we are losing, certainly losing a volt, a volt or so of energy when these, uh, when these incandescent lights are switched on. I am keen to give these LED lights a try because I was racing at, uh, racing at Silverstone at the end of last year, it was a very wet day and uh, so we had lights, all, all the lights, rain lights, wipers on and unfortunately the alternator failed which obviously wasn't wasn't great timing and after I think we got around 25 minutes into the race and then, then, then the car came to a complete stop um, so my thought was if I could put LED lights on this car it should give me a fair chance of getting sort of 30 maybe even a 40 minute race out of it even if the uh, the alternator fails again there are quite a wide selection of different LED lights available I bought these these are Osram ones for the, for the indicators so I'd like to sort of give those a try I've also got these little cap ones these are just from Ebo for the for the brake lights I've got another one here for the rain light we should have some little yeah some little um little LED here LEDs here for the front front side lights now personally I, I do like the look of the car with the sort of warm white uh, lights on it rather than the really cool bright the cool uh, sort of blue light that you get for, for, from some LEDs. So the ones I've chosen, apart from obviously these are the coloured anyway, so these are amber and red to go into the, uh, these are going to the brake lights and then, and then the indicators. I was told not to use a white LED for the indicators because it can wash out. So we're trying these amber ones to see, see how they work out. You'll also notice on this Osram pack that it, let me just get that in focus for you. So you'll see there it does say off road use only, so you're not actually allowed to use these on the road. For me, that's not a problem because the car's on the track. Um, but whether I don't know whether it, whether it varies from country to country, or, or it, I'd, I'd be very surprised really if you, if you got stopped for using these for the uh, for the side and brake lights. Obviously, the headlights is, is is another matter. I have got sort of two very cheap two very cheap H4 bulbs here. Um, for me, my as I said, my main sort of Main reason for putting these LEDs in is to have um, is to have sort of a, a, as lower power as possible being used, but by being used by the lighting system. So we'll drop these in. I'm, I'm not expecting a great deal from them. I have heard that the beam pattern from these is, is pretty poor. For me, that's not a problem. I don't I don't race at night, and if I were to do a night race, I'd probably put I'd probably put the halogen halogen bulbs back in. Cost wise, I think this was about the most expensive bulb at eleven pounds. Uh, these Osram ones that. Uh, to, to replace the indicator, I think these came in at eleven pounds a pair, or maybe maybe fourteen pounds for a pair. These little little side light replacement ones, again, I think they were I think they were five pounds each, something like that. Let's take a look at the front indicator and side light. Fairly easy to swap on this car. If, if all the lights are sort of you, you reach them all externally rather than internally, like you do on on, on some modern vehicles. So we've just got these two these two flathead screws they hold this sort of chrome frame on and then under here we'll find we'll find the two lights so the bigger one the big one of the two is the uh, that, that's the indicator and then the smaller one is the side light. I've got the two replacement bulbs here so I'm going to swap them over and then we'll have a comparison between the two sides once they're in so we've got our indicator here we'll find should have a little there we go so that's the indicator in and then it's a little bit grubby in there but I think for today we'll leave that and we've got our side light it's a warm white LED side light there um, let's just pop this pop the cover back on so we've got our our lens in place Just to compare the two, this side is the normal incandescent bulb, and over here, over here is the LED. So, I think visually, 
The LED is, 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 uh, is certainly a little bit brighter. I quite like the colour of it as well because that is a that's a, that's a warm white when it doesn't look it doesn't look too out of place. A little bit I think it's a slightly higher colour temperature than the than the incandescent, but certainly pretty pleased with that one. And now for the indicators, I'll start with the uh, with the new LED, LED bulb this side. So that's the LED, and then there's the normal incandescent. I would say between the two of them, I don't think I could pick one as being brighter than the other. If anything, I'd say the incandescent looks a tiny bit brighter. Um, the LED does flash a little bit more. Well, I wouldn't say it flashes more quickly, but it's, it, it sort of flashes quicker on and off. Now uh, under here, you'll see I. That, that's the uh, hopefully you're about to see it. That's the flash unit in my car, and that is an electronic one already. That's fine to use with LEDs. If you have the old-fashioned style of a uh, flash unit, you will need to upgrade that. I would recommend one of these, even if you're not running LED lights. They always make the indicators flash at the right rate. And then in the past, if, if you're sat at a junction, the car's idling, the indicators flash very slowly. That doesn't happen with this. To change the front headlight, this uh, this plastic cover comes off. I imagine on your car, you'll have the uh, You'll have the chrome chrome ring on here instead, which can be can be a bit problematic. Problematic getting them off and, and back on again. I've also got the plastic uh, plastic headlamp back here. I must say I, I, I do really like these. It's quite a common place for for MGBs to rust. Is around is around the headlight here, and also the back of the uh, of, of the sort of normal metal bucket does rust as well. So these plastic ones do seem a good idea. We've got just the screws at the top, and then one there at nine o'clock. And to take this uh, to take this lamp off, we just need to undo this lower screw. And then this whole assembly will come forward. If you have this, a sealed beam type lamp, you'll need to sort of buy a, a, an H4 conversion before you can before you can fit the LED lights, or you may you may just want to buy the, the buy the sort of complete LED uh, LED light LED light all in one unit. And then with the screw out, we can just just sort of unclip the uh, unclip the light from those two top holders, and then we've just got our three pin three pin plug at the back that. Should come. There you go. That's popped off. And on these headlights, I've got this little rubber, sort of rubber cover at the back that just lifts away. There we go. And then we can access the bulb. We just got these two metal clips to pop up, like so. That cage then lifts up, and then we can we can take the bulb out. And just to give you a little bit of a view there of the, uh, this is the plastic plastic bucket there for the uh, for the headlamp you can see this it is, it is, you know, I do like these they don't rust away at all um, you don't have that sort of spring in the back either um, but they do seem to adjust okay with the little uh, the adjusters there top and bottom and then that's just the single uh, the single screw at the bottom there that, uh, that holds it in place and putting our our new headlamp in is pretty much the reverse of that so we've got the uh, the light just drops in like that little LED light oops get the right way up that way up sorry and then that will just clip, clip around like that. We've got our rubber cover. This has a little notice on it to say which way is up. So that goes on that way up. Now fitting it back to the car, we've got our three pin plug. It goes on there. We haven't moved our adjuster, so that should hopefully mean the beam angle has, has, stayed, has stayed the same. And then I've just, oops, I've just got one one screw that goes into this bottom part, this bottom part here. So there we go. Let's pop that, pop that back in, and that should be the light now. Uh, now swapped over. So now the all important question: What is the light output like? Well, I have to say first off, I really don't like the colour of the new LED bulbs. They're a very sort of blue colour. I think I much prefer the, uh, the sort of the classic, classic warm white of the halogens. There, output-wise, it's it's hard to tell. Um, I have to say, I think it's quite a lot less than the halogen. Now, if I if I sort of get myself they're on dip beam at the moment, and also that's just going to get a load of glare on the camera. But they do look. I think yeah, the output on those doesn't look particularly good. Let's just try. Uh, let's just try high beam. So this is the high beam output. I mean, they're sort of, yeah, they're fairly, fairly sort of bright looking straight into them. And then and this is the high beam on the halogen. I still think those original halogens are, 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 
a sort of certainly a higher light output. Let me just, uh, I'm just going to see if I can close the garage door down a bit to see what the uh, see what the beam pattern's like. So, so unfortunately, it's not really all that easy to see which is which has got the stronger light. I do think if you look this side, this the side I'm looking at here is is under the halogen, and over there is under the LED. I do think the halogen is is certainly a lot stronger. You know, without driving a car at night. I wouldn't really know. Obviously, the purpose of this exercise for me was to sort of save as much energy as I could in the uh, in the battery in case of the alternator failing. So what I'll probably do is I'll fit the other I'll fit the other um, LED headlight for now. But what I might try and do is get some with a slightly nicer colour um, and not worry about the beam output too much. So now that's that's both the uh, the front headlamp swaps these LED ones. I've got to say I'm not uh, I'm not particularly impressed with those. Unfortunately, I will be trying to look and see if I can uh, see if I can either find something with a slightly better colour. Or, uh, or just going back to the halogens if I ever need to do a, a night race or anything sort of in, 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 in the evening in the UK. Moving around to the rear of the car, we'll change these. Uh, we'll change the tail lights. This is on the on the passenger side, so we'll give this a look and see uh, and see how they uh, how they compare. This car's got the slightly earlier style of uh, of rear lamps, which have got that sort of curved bit at the top. I think the later ones are a bit more a bit more sort of rectangular. So that's the indicator. Looks a bit on the uh, on the hot side there. I don't know if you can see. It looks like it's uh, possibly about to burn out. And then we've got our our stop and brake light there. So let's let's swap the. Uh, we've got the Osram bulbs again. So let's try one of the amber ones in the top. And we can drop the amber one in at the top. So it's just a sort of a what is it? Sort of an eighth. Yeah, not even a quarter. Yeah, so just a small turn to get that in. And then we'll try and do. So the brake light, it do, obviously you'll see with the brake light, it does have a, it does have two alternate pins, so they only go in one way up. There we go. So in in my car, it's the shorter, the, the, the sort of shorter depth is on the, uh, on the right hand side. So there we go. They're, they're clipped in now. Let me just pop the cover back on loosely, and then we'll have a quick compare with the, uh, with the lights that are on the car already. Let's take a look at the, uh, this is just the rear lights as they are, so that's the LED that side and then the normal incandescent bulb that side. I wouldn't say there was a lot, a lot to pick between them and I would say if anything that the, uh, the incandescent bulb was just a little bit brighter there. And then we're just, we're just trying to brake light, so that's the LED brake light compared to the incandescent. Um, I think looking between them I couldn't really really tell you which one which one was brighter and now just to show you the difference at the back of the car what I've got this side is one of the sort of the, the cap type LEDs and over here is the Osram one which is sort of a, a sort of a, I don't know, sort of a, a square shape I'm just going to put put the covers covers back on so you can just see very briefly the difference So that is the uh, that's the cap type there. Let me just go up and down so you can see as you go through the motion what uh, what, the, what the, the sort of pattern looks like. And then this is on the Osram side, the sort of the square pattern. And I've got to say of the two, I think I think the little caplet, the sort of cap type one, is, is a bit better. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with those for the rear of the car. And now let's look very briefly at the light colour. So in this in this side we've got again it's the cap type LED, but this is a white one. And so you can see it. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I think the light there does look a little bit more washed out than this side. This side's a really nice deep, deep red. Whether that shows up on the camera or not, I, I just don't know. And now, just to show you very briefly, this is the uh, the cap type LED lights, just showing the brake lights. Finally, let's look at the indicators. So that's the LED, LED that side, and then there is the incandescent. I would say little. To, to between them I just think the LED sort of lights and goes out that little bit quicker than those lights. You also notice that I've also I've got a, a second light at the back here now this is actually a rain light and it also works as a as a third rear light as well so I'm, this at the moment this is the incandescent bulb in there so let me come back just a little bit so you can take a look. I'm going to swap that over to an LED and just to see how it looks. I've got a slight well not really a slight problem but a, a slight issue is that this Top part of this light also acts as the uh, as, as the in, as the number plate light as well. So I'm going to leave a, a clear bulb a clear bulb in here, also a warm white one, rather than going for a red one. 
So there is our rain light bulb fitting. That does give that does give quite a nice light. Let me just see how it's that's how it is with the headlights. Let me see how it is when it's on as a dedicated rain light. And there it is now as the rain light, and that does look that does look nice and bright. I don't think I'll have any any problems with that uh, with that showing up in the rain. And the rear of the car. I'd also like to make this uh, make this rear LED rain, rain light flash. So what I've got, I've got a little little sort of flash unit here. This is just a a small one that suits the low wattage of the LED bulbs. It's got two two spade caps in it. So all I'm going to do is just access the wires in the boot here and join join that up. So unfortunately, it's not the easiest to try and show you, but there's the uh, there's the flash unit there, and then we've got the the yellow wire is the wire I've used to power the rain light um, fr from the front of the car, and that's then going into this the red wire that's the back of the light. And there we have one flashing rain light. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, now the imp all important bit uh, for me anyway was seeing um, seeing what power we would uh, we would save by having you know have, having these LED lights in a car. So let's see let's see what we've got on the voltmeter. So we're let's see. So we're showing come on 12.6 at the moment. So let's put the headlights on. I think this was best part of a volt last time round. And so they're both on and it stayed at stayed at 12.6 which is uh, quite impressive let's have the rain light on I've dropped it a tiny little bit and then our, our brake lights so yeah i mean that does i think that's quite a quite a saving certainly in terms of voltage over over the standard incandescent bulb so i think i'll definitely be sticking with the leds for now certainly in terms of if i'm if i'm using the car in uh, in the daytime so that's now the LED lights installed in my car. I'd have to say I'm very pleased with the ones for the for the indicators, for the for the brake lights, and also for the side lights. I think the ones for the uh, for the front lights. I think for a road car, I probably wouldn't put put them in at all. And certainly, if I was doing an evening or a night race, I'd swap back to the halogens. But I will keep a look and see if I can see if I can find anything a little bit better. As always, with any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch, and don't forget to like the video and and subscribe to my channel. Many thanks. Bye.